Every human being is a victim of something, whether it's desire, addiction, ignorance, or even faith. This is literally the only quote I could find that works for how we're going to talk about the shadow of being the victim today. It's by Lee Thomas. And if you're wondering why that is, stay tuned. Welcome to the Shadow Work Library. I'm Jessica DePotsy, and for the next at least 61 shows, I'm going to take you through this series that covers the spectrum of negative patterns in the human experience. Hey everybody, so this is a unique entry into the library. I'm going to talk about it a little differently because of the nature of how it is so ingrained in our lives. Victimization is part of what makes us human, and if we truly transcend the victim mentality, the world we live in would be completely different from what it is today. Escaping from the world of victim mentality into the spacious world of freedom is the number one thing we humans want most, and it's the number one reason for why I created the Shadow Work Library, to help people feel free. This shadow has been with us since the development of our neocortex, which gives us the higher functions like sensory perception, um, spatial reasoning, conscious thought, and language. And so it gives us the ability to have self-reflective consciousness. And its purpose, now this is a complicated one, so hang in there with me, it ensures that each of us is our own worst enemy. So we can have this really autonomous human experience based on what we sow. In other words... <laughs> And this isn't always apparent since we see, you know, that like bad things happen to good people and people who lie, cheat and steal. They appear to get ahead in today's world. But this is really because we have this tendency to only see the surface of things. You know, sometimes it takes longer for this to become apparent, maybe even generations later. But that old biblical axiom of as you sow, you shall reap, that is a universal law. And you really have to believe that if you are committed to going from this victim mentality into freedom because only then when you acknowledge that this is a just a general universal law can you make this shift in your attitude and realize that it's not about what happens to you it's about how you handle it so let's talk about attitude then you can either behave as though you're a victim of circumstance or you can take full responsibility for your situation so yeah there are like two ways you can go about doing this if you're playing the victim which is what we're talking about today You're looking outside of yourself when you experience an emotional low or even an emotional high for that matter. We come into this world believing that true joy and happiness and success and peace and all those, you know, more high vibing feelings, that's an effect of something outside of us. Um, You know, like being on a faraway beach with a cocktail in your hand or being with good company, having a partner you love, having a job you love, you know, so naturally we spend all of our lives chasing whatever we think brings us joy. And so that is a form of victimization. We are victim to the things that we love. And so we spend all of this time chasing that feeling. And on the low end of the spectrum, we blame and complain about all these outside circumstances that are making us feel like shit. So it's my wife that's always in, you know, alpha mode. It's these nutrient starving GMO freaking vegetables. It's the president and the man in the system. And that's why this is so complicated. Um, as humans, we're just hardwired to look for a reason for our emotions. And despite our best efforts, our emotions have more power over us than our minds. And I mean, all you need to really do is look around with that lens on and you can see what a truth that is. I mean, that's exactly why I'm doing this podcast. You know, it's like explaining the reason why you feel a certain way. Um, Jeff and I have been watching the original Star Trek here and there. And what just came to mind is this Spock character when he takes jabs he's kind of like kind of pretentious at his human friends for being so emotional he says things like you know it's curious how how often humans manage to obtain what you don't want and like you know he finds their illogical you know ways and their foolish emotions as like this irritant in his life and he's so right the sheer power of our emotional states far outpowers the cognitive process for us humans anyway and so to really escape being the victim to anything outside of yourself would have to only be a process of like transcending our genetics, which I am not capable of doing and you probably aren't either. So yeah, I mean, there is something that we can do here. Like we can transform the shadow 
uh, like all the others, but it'll be really the last step in your shadow work process. And I wanted to talk about it now, even though it's a little early, so that you have this in the back of your mind as you go through this library. Um, All the shadows that you experience, whether it's the shadow of desire that we talked about um, on the you know, last episode or the shadow of reaction, you can think, how am I being a victim in this situation? So it's just something to have back there. Now, how do we recognize this happening in our life? As always, I want to talk about the repressive and reactive versions of how the victim mentality manifests. On the introverted emotional direction of being the victim, so targeting yourself here, you tend to just complain about things. I'm too fat. I don't have enough money. I'm tired. I am exhausted by the mass media. And this shame version of victimization complains inwardly and it has this air of just general pessimism about like life in general. The other form of being a victim is specifically directing your negativity at a target. So instead of I'm too fat, it's my family's Italian and they taught me that eating is a form of comfort. And instead of I'm tired, it's this dog keeps me up all night or I'm exhausted by the mass media. Well, with this more reactive version, it's all about the Democrats or the Republicans or the people who perpetuate the drama of the politics by watching the news all day. So as humans, and part of what makes us human is that we are naturally victims to external circumstances, whether it's something that happens to you or for you or something that you do to or for yourself. So how is it that we can transcend this and then experience that freedom that we're all wanting? I think the first thing we need to do is just identify like what even is freedom? I did a quick Google definition search because I was having a bit of a hard time with this. And it says that it's the power to uh, or the power or right to act, speak or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. If we believe that that's a good general definition for it, freedom is possible, but it comes at a price, which is complete transparency and knowledge about every victim circumstance that you're playing out in your life because in all cases you are the one that's imprisoning yourself and i can clearly say all cases because there are so many amazing stories about um well actually horrifying but amazing in the sense that they're inspiring about abductees prisoners of war refugees who are literally imprisoned like people who've had their hands cut off and seen their families massacred and who still they still resonate deeply with their own internal power to change the circumstance which gave them that real power to think as they wanted that that sense of freedom and that kept them alive or even if it didn't you know like someone like Anne Frank going out with hope and courage that is exactly the way I'd imagine we all want to go out one day so to transform your victim mentality into a sense of freedom you really have to start by asking yourself where do I not feel free is it with money is it with my relationship? Is it like free time? I just don't have any free time and I feel like a victim to the clock. So let's pick one. Let's say a common one, it's with money. You feel like you're a victim to your financial situation. In order to transform this, you really have to own every negative feeling around it and take full responsibility for it, which can be challenging. Sometimes you just feel like it's out of your control. So let's role play a little bit. Uh, Are you living in a place that has a high cost of living? You know, are you working at a job that doesn't really pay you enough? Are you spending too much money on things that you think will bring you some joy? Are there lots of people in your family that depend on you financially? And as you ask yourself these questions, you have to humble yourself enough to see that you're doing it to yourself and your negative feelings about being trapped is is not a victim thing. It's a priority thing. You're living in, I don't know, Redondo Beach because of the lifestyle. So you're prioritizing that over your financial stability or your financial freedom or that sense of financial freedom and you're working at a job doesn't pay you enough I mean you can move to a dozen other countries where you can live like a king in paradise but you want to stay there because it's comfortable and your family's nearby and you want your kids to get an education and wherever you're at it's a you're prioritizing that over your financial freedom and after you do this enough times you can see okay does your cons list weigh out all of the pros are you are these real prioritizations for you or are they things that you are are doing out of guilt or shame or out of duty that may make you resentful later on? And I think the best we can do to feel freedom with this current genetic makeup that we're dealing with here is to raise your awareness to the external situations in your life and know that you are really, really actually responsible for the way you feel about it. So then we find like freedom isn't really uh, something it is is a state of mind. It's not. Um, I mean, it's not a circumstance. It's a state of mind. So how does this become a strength? 
when you do the work of going through absolutely all of the shadow states that we're going to go through in this shadow work podcast, you then have this heightened awareness of all the ways that you're playing the central victim when you're feeling good and bad. And that's where the strength of freedom really plays out. The price of freedom is like honestly terrifying because if you really want it, it forces you to have some incredibly difficult conversations with yourself and take a look at your priorities to see if you, again, really prioritize them or if it's something that you feel like you have to do. And it's okay if you feel like you have to do them, but you have to prioritize that feeling over that sense of freedom. And I would say that with our program, The Trials, that's what we primarily focus on helping you identify and take ownership of how you've been playing a victim in your environment, in your mind, in your body. And it's kind of a form of post-traumatic growth in its own way, because you start to lose a grasp on how you've identified yourself. And without this nice, neat box you're in, it really feels like chaos. And I mean, chaos, like chaos, the word itself is derived from the word chasm. It's and chasm means an empty space that really, really wants to be filled. And in a way, that's what freedom is as well. It's a space that's not filled with like the why is, why is it like this? And how do I do that? And how can I hold on to this feeling? And how can I get away from this feeling? It's the space that occurs when you realize how victimized you are by your own beliefs. I mean, true freedom is kind of weird. It's something I don't think we really want when it comes down to it. We like the pursuit of, of this drama of living a romantic life, you know, like the movies. And we love striving for our greatest hopes. And with that inevitably comes, we're faced with our greatest fears. There's no end to our emotional processing, but that's one of the great things about having this human experience. That's another way our deeply ingrained victim mentality can be a strength. You can transform it into gratitude for the lemons that life throws at you because you know that it'll help you see everything else just that much sweeter. You can really show true gratitude for your partner who helps you feel loved because as it is now we need those external sources to aid us on this journey to feel good and to to feel bad and this so this is kind of turning out to be one of these rare submissions where the transformation is almost not possible because like i'd mentioned several times before we are really dependent on external situations we are victims to everything we, we are experiencing in order to feel a certain way. But what I'm really trying to get across here is that being the victim with awareness gives you that space to feel free more often than you're not. And you don't feel like you are a prisoner in a world that you didn't create. It gives you more internal power so that you can really audit your life and your lifestyle and choose to prioritize, continue to prioritize the things that give you that sense of really being kind of stuck and have a little bit more, just feel better about those decisions rather than feeling like you're the victim. And so as Jeff starts to grind something in the garage, I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, I think I will stop it there. So yeah, that is the third submission of the Shadow Work Library. If this stuff is resonating with you, I highly suggest you enroll in the trials, which you can find at wayoftrials.com. It takes what I'm talking about to an entirely new level. It focuses on really understanding the functions of your physical body and your psychology so that you can better understand how to be free. And on the next episode, I'm going to be talking about the shadow weakness. And ah, this is going to be such a good one. I think I say that every week, but they're just also delightful. If you find people have said you're a little bit on the cruel side or overly sentimental, two opposites here. I understand that, but I will explain that on the next episode, why those two things go together. Then weakness is your word of the week. We're going to talk about the origins of weakness, why it exists, how it manifests in your life, what to do about it, and then how you can transform it into the strength of equality. So yeah, that's it for me. Um, Thanks for listening. And if you're liking the show, please shoot me a little review. That would be nice. Um, And I'd like to thank Richard Redd, who's gifted the world with this information where I get most of my research from. Have a great week, everybody, and I will talk to you again soon. 